Today is the 15th of January. Welcome to Walking the Way. My name is Ray. I want to say thank you to everyone for listening in as we continue to explore what it means to have a regular rhythm of worship together. And if you're joining us for the very first time, let me explain that each episode follows a really simple pattern of prayer, scripture, and music. So having explained how it works, let's get going with today's episode of Walking the Way. Let's pray, shall we? Dear Lord, help me remember what a difference it makes when I make time with you a priority in my morning. Awaken me in body and spirit each day with a desire to meet with you and to hear you speak words of affirmation, assurance and wisdom over my heart as I prepare to go into my day. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to have our first piece of music, just to give us a little bit of space to center our thoughts on God. And after the music, we're going to get into our Bible readings for today. And in today's Bible readings, we read about the initiation of the Passover, and then we carry on with Paul's book to the Philippians. Let's pray, shall we? God, you made the heavens and the earth, and you have revealed your beauty in creation, and you've inspired the book that we are now about to study. Please help us now as we read together. Take us deeper into understanding more about you and your love for us. We ask this in the name of your precious Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And our Bible readings this week are taken from Exodus chapter 12 and 13, and we're reading from the God's Word translation. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in Egypt, This month will be the very first month of the year for you. Tell the whole community of Israel, on the tenth day of the month, each man must take a lamb or a young goat for his family, one animal per household. A household may be too small to eat a whole animal, That household and the one next door can share one animal. Choose your animal based on the number of people and what each person can eat. Your animal must be a one-year-old male that has no defects. You may choose a lamb or a young goat. Take care of it until the 14th day of this month. Then at dusk, all the assembled people from the community of Israel must slaughter their animals. They must take some of the blood and put it on the sides and tops of the door frames of the houses where they will eat the animals. The meat must be eaten that same night. It must be roasted over a fire and eaten with bitter herbs and unleavened bread. Don't eat any of it raw or boiled, but roast the whole animal over a fire. 
Don't leave any of it until morning. Anything left over in the morning must be burnt up. This is how you should be dressed when you eat it. With your belt on, your sandals on your feet, and your shepherd's staff in your hands, you must eat it in a hurry. It is the Lord's Passover. On that same night I will go throughout Egypt and kill every firstborn male, both human and animal. I will severely punish all the gods of Egypt, because I am the Lord. But the blood on your houses will act as a sign for your protection. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. Nothing will touch or destroy you when I strike Egypt. This day will be one for you to remember. This is a permanent law for generations to come. You will celebrate this day as a pilgrimage festival in the Lord's honor. For seven days you must eat unleavened bread. On the very first day you must remove any yeast that you have in your houses. Whoever eats anything with yeast in it from the first day through the seventh day must be excluded from Israel. You must have a holy assembly on the first day and another one on the seventh. You must not work on these days except to prepare your own meals. That's all you may do. You must celebrate the festival of unleavened bread because it was on this very day that I brought you out of Egypt in organized family groups. This is a permanent law for future generations. You must celebrate this day. From the evening of the fourteenth day of the first month until the evening of the twenty-first day, you must eat unleavened bread. There shall be no yeast in your house for seven days. Whoever eats anything with yeast in it must be excluded from the community of Israel, whether he is an Israelite or not. Eat nothing made with yeast. Wherever you live, you must only eat unleavened bread. Then Moses called for all the leaders of Israel. He said to them, Pick out a lamb or a young goat for your families, and kill the Passover animal. Take the branch of the hyssop plant, dip it in the blood which is in the bowl, and put some of the blood on the tops and sides of the door frames of your houses. No one may leave the house until morning. The Lord will go throughout Egypt to kill the Egyptians. When he sees the blood on the tops and the sides of the door frames, he will pass over that doorway, and he will not let the destroyer come into your house to kill you. You must follow these instructions. They are a permanent law for you and your children. When you enter the land that the Lord will give you as he promised, observe this ceremony. When your children ask you what the ceremony means to you, you must answer, It's the Passover sacrifice in the Lord's honor. The Lord passed over the houses of the Israelites in Egypt and spared our homes when he killed the Egyptians. Then the people knelt, bowing with their faces touching the ground. The Israelites did what the Lord had commanded Moses and Aaron. At midnight, the Lord killed every firstborn male in Egypt, from the firstborn son of Pharaoh who ruled the land, to the firstborn son of the prisoner in jail, and also every firstborn animal. Pharaoh, all his officials, and all the other Egyptians got up during the night. There was loud crying throughout Egypt because in every house someone had died. Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron during the night, and he said, You and the Israelites must leave my people at once. Go worship the Lord as you ask. Take your flocks and your herds too as you ask. Just go and bless me too. The Egyptians begged the people to leave the country quickly. They said, Soon we'll be dead. So the people picked up their bread dough before it had risen and carried it in their shoulders and bowls wrapped in cloths. The Israelites did what Moses told them, and asked the Egyptians for gold and silver jewelry and for clothes. The Lord made the Egyptians generous to the people, and they gave them what they asked for. So the Israelites stripped Egypt of its wealth. The Israelites left Ramesses to go to Sakoth. There were about 600,000 men on foot, plus all the women and children. Many other people also went with them, along with large numbers of sheep, goats, and cattle. With the dough they bought from Egypt, they baked round, flat bread. The dough hadn't risen because it had been thrown out of Egypt and had no time to prepare food for the trip. The Israelites had been living in Egypt for 430 years. After exactly 430 years, all of the Lord's people left Egypt in organized family groups. That night the Lord kept watch to take them out of Egypt. All Israelites in future generations must keep watch on this night since it is dedicated to the Lord. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, these are the rules for the Passover. No foreigner may eat the Passover meal. Any male slave you have bought may eat it after you have circumcised him. No foreigner visiting you may eat it. 
No hired worker may eat it. The meal must be eaten inside one house. Never take any of the meat outside the house. Never break any of the bones. The whole community of Israel must celebrate the Passover. The foreigners may want to celebrate the Lord's Passover. First, every male in the household must be circumcised. Then they may celebrate the Passover like native-born Israelites. But no uncircumcised males may ever eat the Passover meal. The same instructions apply to native-born Israelites as well as foreigners. All the Israelites did as the Lord had commanded Moses and Aaron. That very day the Lord brought all the Israelites out of Egypt in organized family groups. The Lord spoke to Moses, Set apart every firstborn male for me. Every firstborn male offspring among the Israelites is mine, whether human or animal. Then the Lord said to the people, Remember this day, the day when you left Egypt, the land of slavery. The Lord used his mighty hand to bring you out of here. Don't eat anything made of yeast. Today, in the month of Abib, you are leaving Egypt. The Lord swore to your ancestors that he would give you the land of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Hivites, and Jebusites. When he brings you into that land flowing with milk and honey, you must observe the ceremony in this month. For seven days you must eat unleavened bread. The seventh day will be a pilgrimage festival in the Lord's honor. Only unleavened bread should be eaten during these seven days. No sourdough or yeast should be seen anywhere in your territory. On that day tell your children, We do this because of what the Lord did for us when we left Egypt. This festival will be like a mark on your hand or a reminder on your forehead that the teachings of the Lord are always to be part of your conversation. Because the Lord used His mighty hand to bring you out of Egypt, you must follow these rules every year at this time. When the Lord brings you to the land of the Canaanites and give it to you as He swore to you and your ancestors, sacrifice every firstborn male offspring to the Lord. The firstborn male offspring of each of your animals belong to the Lord. It will cost you a sheep or a goat to buy any firstborn donkey back from the Lord. If you don't buy it back, you must break the donkey's neck. You must also buy every firstborn son back from the Lord. In the future, when your children ask you what this means, tell them, The Lord used his mighty hand to bring us out of slavery in Egypt. When Pharaoh was too stubborn to let us go, the Lord killed every firstborn male in Egypt, human and animal. That's why we sacrifice every firstborn male to the Lord and buy back every firstborn son from the Lord. So this festival will be like a mark on your hand and like a brand on your forehead because the Lord used his mighty hand to bring us out of Egypt. When Pharaoh let the people go, God didn't lead them on the road through Philistine country, although this was the shortest route. God said, If they see they may have to fight a war, they may change their minds and go back to Egypt. So God led the people around the other way, on the road through the desert towards the Red Sea. The Israelites were ready for battle when they left Egypt. Moses took the bones of Joseph with him, because Joseph had made the Israelites solemnly swear to do this. Joseph had said, God will definitely come to help you. When he does, take my bones with you. They moved from Sokoth and camped at Etham, on the edge of the desert. By day the Lord went ahead of them in a column of smoke to lead them on their way. By night he went ahead of them in a column of fire to give them light so that they could travel by day or by night. The column of smoke was always in front of the people during the day, and the column of fire was always there at night. Philippians 2 so then, as Christians, do you have any encouragement? Do you have any comfort from love? Do you have any spiritual relationships? Do you have any sympathy and compassion? Then fill me with joy by having the same attitude and the same love, living in harmony and keeping one purpose in mind. Don't act out in selfless ambition or be conceited. Instead, humbly think of others as being better than yourselves. Don't be concerned about your own interests but also be concerned about the interests of others. Have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. Although he was in the form of God and equal with God, he did not take advantage of, his, of this equality. Instead, he emptied himself by taking on the form of a servant, by becoming like other humans, by having a human appearance. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, death on a cross. 
This is why God has given him an exceptional honor, the name honored above all other names, so that the name of Jesus everyone in heaven, on earth, and in the world below will kneel and confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. My dear friends, you have always obeyed, not only when I was with you, but even more now that I am absent. In the same way, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. It is God who produces in you the desires and actions that please Him. Do everything without complaining or arguing, then you will be blameless and innocent. You will be God's children without any faults among people who are crooked or corrupt. You will shine like stars among them in the world as you hold firmly to the word of life. Then I can brag on the day of Christ that my effort was not wasted and that my work produced results. My life is being poured out as part of the sacrifice and service I offer to God for your faith. Yet I am filled with joy, and I share that joy with all of you. For that same reason, you should also be filled with joy and share that joy with me. I hope that the Lord Jesus will allow me to send Timothy to you soon, so that I can receive some encouraging news about you. I don't have anyone else like Timothy. He takes a genuine interest in your welfare. Everyone looks after his own interests, not only those of Jesus Christ, but you know what kind of person Timothy proved to be. Like a father and son, we worked hard together to spread the good news. I hope to send him as soon as I see how things are going to turn out for me, but the Lord gives me confidence that I will come to visit you soon. I feel I must send Epaphroditus, my brother, co-worker and fellow soldier, back to you. You sent him as your personal representative to help me in my need. He has been longing to see all of you and is troubled because you heard that he was sick. Indeed, he was so sick that he almost died. But God had mercy not only on him, but also on me, and kept me from having one sorrow on top of another. So I am especially eager to send him back to you. In this way you will have the joy of seeing him again, and I will feel relieved. Give him a joyful Christian welcome. Make sure you honor people like Epaphroditus highly. He risked his life and almost died for the work of Christ in order to make up for the help you couldn't give me. We're going to have our second piece of music, just to give us some time to think about the bits of scripture that may have caught our attention. And after the music, we'll say our prayers for the day and the time of the year.
Let's pray, shall we? Lord, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the dawn of the new day. Thank you for the blessings upon my life and my family. I give you all the praise and honor because this is the day that you have made, and you are mighty and worthy indeed. All honor and glory belong to you. Lord, with you, I will do the impossible. My past is no longer important because you, O oh Lord, are my future. Amen. And our prayer for the time of the year. May today be a thoughtful day, Lord, when your Spirit leads my prayer. I trust every trouble, small and wide, with faith into your care. Let Friday always prompt my heart to stand upon the truth. Lord, darkness has been overcome. The earth belongs to you. And we say together the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us and remain with us now and forevermore. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. And if you'd like us to pray with you or for you, please drop us a line through the usual channels and check the show notes for the contact details. You've been listening to Walking the Way, the podcast based on the book This Day, A Wesleyan Way of Prayer by Lawrence Hulse Dukey, published by Abingdon Press. All of the details for today's show can be found in the show notes, including the scripture passages and credits for any and all prayers. If you want to partner with Walking the Way, please head to www.givesendgo.com forward slash walking the way. And if you want any more information about the podcast or me, please head to rayborrett.co.uk and you can find me on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. And don't forget you can also listen to Walking the Way on TuneIn and YouTube. My name is Ray, and so until next time, I'll be here waiting as we continue walking the way.